सर ये जो एक केस जो आपने आज डिस्कस किया वट हैज़ बिन द symptom and how did you get through the whole process of treatment see uh, this patient uh, he had been with us for like one month in the ward uh, he was having continuous fever like and fever that to very very high grade fever 102 103 degrees celsius uh, degree fahrenheit for uh, so many days and uh, this kind of fever actually just sucks everything out of the patient this protein reserve everything is a catabolic state so the patient loses a lot and he uh, we were like searching for the cause of fever he was under the care of uh, physician medicine specialist dr amita bhosh at that time and uh, he was trying to look out for the cause of fever because cultures in ke uh, normal are the sari cheeze kai reports they were coming out to be normal but then they did a ct scan and in that ct scan there was an evidence of uh, dilatation of aorta of the abdominal aorta but it was not so dilated it was like 3.5 cm and according to guidelines uh, 3.5 cm is not an indication to operate on a patient but yes if uh, the size increases then we have to operate and in any case because he was running continuous fever in that scene, in that scenario it is not wise to operate on the patient because the tissues are very fragile and even if you do a surgery the sutures they don't hold and uh, uh, usually you may lose the patient on the ot table because of bleeding so uh, we sent him home and uh, the fever subsided and everything was okay uh, but one uh, one day early in the morning uh, we got a call from emergency that said that he has arrived in the emergency With a blood pressure of just 50 or 60 systolic and uh, no globin of five, six. So the first thing that clicked to my mind was uh, there is probably that aneurysm that is given. Uh, but we were lucky enough that he gave us time to resuscitate. Uh, we gave him fluids. Then uh, we transfused him two units of blood also uh, before surgery, so that we could have a good, uh, a decent hemoglobin to work on. because i was anticipating a lot of blood loss during the surgery also so we took him up uh, with a hemoglobin of around uh, 7 or 8 and uh, during surgery also it was a very very difficult task because the anatomy was not perfect it was way away from perfect because uh, there was a thick fibrous layer of reactive tissue that was overlying the aorta so it was very difficult to find the aorta and if in between in advertently had i been had i entered that sac that cavity by any means that i would have would have just given away and the gush of blood patient would really crash out and we cannot do anything so we were lucky enough to get up to the proximal portion of the aorta search for that and uh, put a clamp on it so that we can uh, take the clots out remove uh, that diseased aorta and replace it with a graft Uh, but very important thing is that uh, I think that the rent that uh, uh, hole in the aorta it was very close to the origin of the renal arteries, arteries that supply the kidney. So it was very it was inevitable for us to put a clamp uh, proximal to the renal artery. So there was no supply to the renal artery for like uh, 40 minutes till we uh, sifted that uh, diseased aorta, removed those clots, and and as to most the graft. So. it was definitely very challenging uh, as far as surgery is concerned it took us 8 hours uh, for the whole procedure and take him out but uh, he was hemodynamically okay also but we were very skeptical about uh, skeptical about uh, the multi organ dysfunction we knew that this is going to happen because in this major kind of surgery with so much of blood loss other organs actually they definitely they take a beating so his kidney uh, got shut down in post op in icu and uh, but still we managed it medically his creatinine shot up to 4.5 and uh, his liver enzymes were also very high so one thing we we could uh, manage one thing and then get stuck with some other thing so once we got stuck with kidney we uh, then the urine uh, started coming and then we got stuck with liver enzymes liver dysfunction blood ammonia level started rising then we took that ammonia out of the blood uh, through by by uh, means of passing more motions so that way ammonia was taken care then uh protein levels they troubled us a lot then his lung got collapsed once then lung also got an issue so so many things it is just that his heart was continuously beating nicely his heart function was good that is what uh, we could do.
that is how we could uh, tide over the situation. And the family was so positive. It was, it was really good. It is generally not uh, seen that uh, when the kidney is stopped for 40 minutes or 40 minutes or so and still the patient recovers fully, it, it is it is one good thing that uh, you also talked a little while earlier that the whole team was involved in different, uh, different lungs, kidney, general physician, yourself, anesthesia, everybody was working as a team. How was that possible? Because, it, And when the crisis is such a big crisis, when the patient is already 70 plus. Yeah, that's very important. And uh, that is what makes this case special. Uh, because uh, in this age group, you cannot afford to go on a back foot. If you have moved ahead, then you always wish that nothing should take you back now. Nothing should take you back, but we were taken aback every time. We took care of kidneys, we got stuck with liver. Then again, we managed the liver, then we got stuck with the lungs. Then again, he came out of the lungs also. Ammonia. Yeah, ammonia, all these things, so many things. But I would say that it is God's grace because uh, uh, we are just like uh, we are trained to do things but uh, how you how you how you organize the team that is also a good learning experience both at the medical fraternity and also in for the for the betterment of the patient because you have, you, you are getting new challenges on the ot itself exactly so uh, a very important thing was uh, uh, to gather the team in time for for a major procedure so we have a, a dedicated team of uh, cardiac surgery who specifically were trained for all these uh, procedures and uh, Dr. Jitu is our uh, cardiac anesthetist as uh, Mr. Safwan uh, is uh, sitting right there, he, he's, he's our uh, physician assistant and uh, he helps me out uh, during the surgery and all the other cardiac OT staff, we have, we have a dedicated the people with us. So it does not take us time to gather the team together in, in any emergency. So we got the team together, We everybody knew what is to be done, everyone knew what is their job and they did it perfectly. So we did the surgery nicely and then post-op, I specifically uh, made sure that uh, whenever we are dealing with some organ dysfunction, we involve that, that uh, doctor that department and uh, I used to take uh, the follow-up very closely with the nephrologist, with the liver person, Dr. Ayush Ding, the nephrologist, Dr. Sandeep Mandal, then uh, critical care specialist, Dr. Piyush. Well, so, uh, and uh, the best part about this hospital is that uh, the communication between the doctors is very solid and nobody has any yeah. ego issues because many times you know the, the, the ego issues there are doctors like a uh, team like uh, okay I've, I've suggested something and he's saying something no 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 i'm not going to listen to him what he has he said i'm going to, uh, going to do it my way so, and it is actually the patient who suffers at the end because of ego issues among doctors so that is very de detrimental for any patient's so you have to be like zero egos and just uh, listen to what other the, the specialists are saying. I'm a surgeon, I'm not a nephrologist, I'm not a liver guy. But so the best thing I could do is that listen to what they are saying. Things got better. And at the end, how is the patient doing now? And what is the advice that you gave to people at large? Uh, any suggestion, if at all? The patient is actually doing very nice now, very well. And uh, when we discharged him, actually, he had uh, this uh, uh, critical illness myopathy, what you call it. So uh, when the patient is critically ill for like one month, two months, uh, he loses a lot of protein from the body. So it is a catabolic state. So a lot of protein is lost and that is what causes weakness. The patient was not even able to lift anything, lift his legs or even arm. That is what he said. I was not able to walk or even uh, uh, stand up from the chair. But uh, gradually we knew that uh, if his uh, uh, feeding and uh, nutritional status is taken care of along with uh, physiotherapy, he is going to do well because he has come out of such a major thing and I don't think we should we, we'll be going back foot now I mean it's, the family was also uh, very very supportive they, they always uh, I told them that uh, these, these things are happening and uh, they were like doctor you we have full trust on you you do whatever you want we are, we are right here if you need us for anything you can get back to us you just tell us we'll do whatever we can do Thank you very much.